Hello and thank you for joining us on the Sunday edition of Journalist Hangout. I'm Ayodele Uzubakun. Today on the program, outpouring of a comium as Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar bows out as Nigeria's 20th Chief of Air Staff. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Kolade Otitoju and Oba Adoye will also be joining us. So we're ready. Let the hangout start now. Thank you for joining us. One Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar has retired as the 20th Chief of Air Staff in Nigeria, but it has been outpouring of encomium for him after 66 months in charge. The retired Air Marshal Abubakar is credited for supervising conduction of several missions in the counterinsurgency war and expansion of structure of the force. TVC News defense correspondent Sifon Essen has the story. The coming on board of the administration of President Muhammadu Buhari in 2015 brought about marginal improvement to security in the country. Before then, Boko Haram attacks had been recorded in many parts of the country beyond the northeast. At the beginning of 2015, the insurgents had control of over 20 local government areas in the northeastern part of the country. To reverse the trend, the Nigerian Air Force conducted several missions to project air power in support of Operation Lafayette Dole, the flagship of the nation's counterinsurgency campaign. More so, the Air Force under Air Marshal Abubakar conducted independent operations against insurgents. Some of the independent operations include Operation Ruanguta 1 to 4, Operation Thunder Strike 1 and 2, and Operation Green Sweep 1 to 3. Others are Operation Rattlesnake 1 to 3, Operation Decisive Edge, Operation Long Reach 1 and 2 and more recently, Operation Hailstorm 1 and 2. In the fight against armed banditry in the Northwest, the Nigerian Air Force deployed troops and air assets as part of the Defense Headquarters Operation codenamed Hadarindaji. It has also conducted dedicated airstrikes against identified bandit locations in an operation codenamed Diran Mikia in 2018 and 2019. Yes, um, last man standing um, he was, and um, obviously because uh, when we all came into service, uh, we all have stipulated um, period to serve, 35 years of service and other conditions. But by virtue of his appointment to the glory of God as chief of the naval staff, you know, he had to serve until the president, commander in chief of the armed forces, you know, finally. Um, decided to change them. And for the period they stayed, five years and six months plus, you know, the rest of us who were his classmates had left, so he was the only one member of 26 regular course still wearing uniform till this very moment. So that makes him the last man standing. In, in one sentence, how would you describe his reign? My, my brother, um, I must say that um, first and foremost, I'm a proud member of not just the cause, I mean, the cause by virtue of the fact that he performed as the chief of the naval staff. The Nigerian Air Force acquired 23 brand new aircraft to boost training and combat readiness of the service. These include 10 Super Mushak trainer aircraft, 5 Mi 35M helicopter gunships, and 2 Bell 412 helicopters. Others are 4 Augusta 109 power attack helicopters and two MI-171E helicopters. Additional 15 aircraft are being expected. 20 previously grounded aircraft including the Falcon 900, ATR-42, Beechcraft and the Super Puma have been reactivated. The Nigerian Air Force Alpha Jets were the first and only fighter aircraft deployed in the Gambia to actualize the mandate of the Gambian people thereby facilitating a peaceful handover of political power to President Adama Barrow in 2017. The Hercules C-130s flying the Nigerian flag also transported humanitarian relief materials to the Sierra Leonean people after the mudslides that affected the country in August 2017. Under the leadership of Air Marshal Abubakar, the Nigerian Air Force expanded its force structure by creating two new branches, two new field commands, 
as well as several new units and quick response groups. The two new commands are the Special Operations Command in Bauchi and the Ground Training Command in Ugu. On, on the part of the Nigerian Air Force, he, uh, definitely a lot of activities took place and the Nigerian Air Force showed that without air power, not so much can be done, particularly when it comes to joint operations. And joint operations uh, was, I mean, most of the operations we've had in Nigeria, um, uh, in, uh, in, in the Northeast, in the Northwest, and so on, involved the Army, the, uh, the Navy to some extent, and the, the Nigerian Air Force. And then the maritime environment, of course, the Nigerian Navy played a dominant role, and air power was required in all of this. And to the best of their ability and their available, available resources, I think the, the chief of the, the outgoing chief of the air staff, uh, they did uh, mobilize the resources available and played a, a very good role. The Nigerian Air Force authorities established three more reference hospitals in Bauchi, Daura, and Port Harcourt. And several residential buildings were renovated across its formations in the country. The outgoing chief of the air staff and the Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar exits the service after 66 months as chief of the air staff. The bottom line, gentlemen, there is that since this, um, the exit of the last service chiefs and uh, one man that has been outstanding and we continue to maintain or talk about his giant stride on journalist hangout is this uh, Masha Sadiq Abubakar. Babajide, what makes the 16 uh, months, I mean to see 66 months yeah. reign of Air Masha Sadiq Abubakar unique? So many reasons. You know, it's not your usual kind of Nigerian. That's the way I would describe him. It's not your usual kind of Nigerian. You cannot um, ease someone who is so committed to excellence that you cannot leverage on friendship to influence him to do what is not convinced is right. You know, he is always excited about the progress of the people around him. I've never seen a Nigerian service chief with the commitment to capacity building like this fellow. I've never seen anyone like him. Capacity building. You know, before now, women in the Air Force, mm. no combatants, were, were regarded as people who should never even fly fighter jets. Mm or even ground attack helicopters. Mm, they were administrative mm. staffs. Mm. Just Supports. use them, support staff, mm. you know, mm. nurses, all mm. of these mm. things. Mm. What? Abaka came and changed all of that. Sent them to some of the best schools in the world for training. You know? One of those guests went to South Africa for training. Another one went to the U.S. We have two women. One died, the one that died, and there's another one. There's a Yoruba girl that is also, that one is, um, a, a, f flies the fighter jet. Which means she can fly the F-7, fly the Alpha jet, which we are still using. So, not just that. We had, because of neglect over the years, and it was deliberate. If you speak with elderly people who had been in, who had been in the Air Force, they would tell you that there was a deliberate attempt to crush the Air Force after the so-called coup of 1985. Um, yes, late 1985, but the plotters, the alleged coup plotters were killed in 1986. I'm talking about the um, you know, the arrest actually began in 1985, you know, late in 85, but it was in 1986 that they were silently executed at a point when showing car and others were begging. were begging. So the Air Force was cannibalized, a lot of the equipment allowed to rot because we felt that 
some of the people who took part or who took part in that uh, uh, abortive coup. Mm. Because their coup at that time was um, at the level of consummation. It had not even been executed. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was where uh, uh, Abangida came up with the idea that the mere contemplation <coughs> of a coup, you are, you are already guilty. To think about something, that means to even think about it yeah. is a crime. <laughs> you have not executed, though. Yeah. you know, how many thoughts go through a man's mind in a day? You know, a woman is passing by, so, ah, I wish this person were my woman. What sort of negative thoughts go through a <laughs> man's mind? Now? The Bible says establish that fact yeah. as a sin. <laughs> <laughs> so <you> just give <laughs> Anyway, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> you know, because my wife will actually be watching. <laughs> you know, so... There was a grand design to crush the Air Force. Mm. And so they neglected all of their equipment. They allowed them to rot. I remember interviewing here Vice Marshal Isa Doko, then Chief of Air Staff. Mm. I interviewed him in Kaduna as a young journalist. And the man was, at a point, the man said, please help us to ask, what have we done? I will never forget. That was the state of the Air Force. The Air Force was so bad at the time she came in that there were occasions when a single aircraft to even go uh, to be airborne was not possible. Mm. That some days they could wake up and no airplane was serviceable enough to fly. It was that bad. It was so bad in the Air Force that junior uh, young officers mm. could not fly. They didn't even have the training to fly. If we wanted to fly maybe C-130, we would go and beg Air Vice Marshals who had retired from the Air Force. Really? Yes. I'm saying this on live television. To come and fly? They would come and help fly. It was a dick that came, and then we started having young men, flight officers, young men in their 20s as fighter pilots. I flew with them, so I know what I'm talking about. All of the boys, like when we, there was a mission that I went, uh, I think in 2017 or so, 2017 and then 2018 December, I was with the Air Force and I joined them on some missions. I, uh, some of the boys that I saw, mm. I have pictures. You even see some of them when we were, I posted a picture on social media where we were looking at a map of the places that we we'll go to, Sambisa and other places. Mm. Those boys were in their twenties. A lot of them, maybe like mm. 25, 26. Mm. It was never like that. Because in fact, why should we go and be bringing people who had retired? We will beg them to come and fly C-130, to come and fly this. At a cost. Jets, yes. Jets that had been grounded. I, was, I asked him when I, when I met him for the first time in Yola. I said, Alpha Jet has been decommissioned for more than 20 years. That's why you are, that's what you are flying. He said, what do you want me to do? That's decommissioned. Decommissioned. You can't get the parts anywhere else. How do we do it? He had to get, he, 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 he entered a deal with uh, the engineering department of ABU mm -hmm. to fabricate parts. Because the parts are not available. The, the makers of the aircraft had decommissioned it. Mm. Well, we, that's the kind of person that, and it was that, Alpha jet that we used, we used to chase away the, uh, the president of uh, Gambia. When our, uh, our, our pilots flew low over his residence, mm. he said, please, I want to talk to President Buhari. <coughs> he didn't want to Why go before. Mm. Yes, mm. Uh, the noise, when the Alpha jet flies over your head, the noise, you know that this is a war plane. <laughs> so the man now inside his house where he was uh, saying that he will not leave power. When our jet flew low over, over him, you know those, the way they do their thing, the man said, I'm ready for talks with President Buhari. That was how we helped to, to, to cement uh, democracy in Gambia. So this is the thing. He got those planes flying again. He entered into negotiations with Pakistan. Pakistan will supply us with not just uh, people who train our engineers and all that, but even airplanes. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. had to find a way to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, when we 
we were talking about these service chiefs, a lot of people be, felt because of uh, their long stay, so that most of them had turned to liabilities. Mm. And um, for us to still recall and pick out somebody, that mm. means that person might have done something really outstanding. Uh, absolutely. Uh, why? If you um, follow uh, the trajectory, the, the path, uh, followed by Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, while you know, in office for the 66 months, you know, he was initially appointed and reappointed again by President Mahmoud Buhari. Of course, he was not the sole um, chief, others also played their part. But Jide had um, captured uh, most of his achievements, which, of course, uh, we've been following since he came to the office. So one, one that came to mind that I, I thought Jide was going to touch on was the um, Operation Rattlesnake uh, in February last year. You know, it yielded a lot of um, results uh, for a nation that uh, was in the midst of fighting insurgency that had even become um, a big problem, one of the biggest uh, abattros for uh, this government. And um, for the fact that since this man left office, you know, the past few days, uh, the avalanche of, um, um, you know, accolades that have been falling in, that have been coming in uh, for him goes to show that indeed the man must have done something, uh, you know, spectacular. In the office, operation compared to, to was a major operation, have you? It, not, not per se, but that really came to mind when Jide was trying to, you know, outline um, all of his missions and, and his achievements. That mm -hmm. just came to mind. It was February last year or so, and um, it, it was um, um, some kind of success against the Boko Haram insurgent, you know. And uh, for me, I'm, 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 I'm somehow a pessimist when it comes to issues like that. But when I saw pictures and I saw reports of that particular operation, you know, I, I, I had to applaud the man, you know, in my own pri 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 privacy. And I'm um, talking about capacity building. I think that's one of um, the areas where our leaders in all, you know, capacities are, are, are lacking, if you, if you, if you, if you understand me. Uh, we are a people of template. We are a people of the past. We are too stuck in the past. We really don't um, give too much life to the paradigm shift that we need uh, for this nation to leave this spot for another spot. But here is the man for people who are so close to him, uh, for the kind of accolades, for the kinds of um, um, applause that have, you know, are coming for him immediately, you know, he, he left office. It shows that, indeed, uh, this man has done quite a lot in that, in that area, and um, his legacies will live after him. And I think it's a big lesson, and it's a big instruction uh, for the incumbent to continue from where uh, this man dropped the baton. Because uh, we, we can't keep going back in the past. Just like Jide said, you want to fly um, a particular craft and you have to go back to someone who had retired to come and fly for you at a cost because it won't come uh, uh, free. It, it's not the way to go. If you really want to leave this spot for another uh, spot. Another thing I've seen from him, you know, from afar, is, is calmness in the midst of trouble. I don't know, Jide is well versed in, in the area of, um, uh, you know, the, the defense um, issues. I don't know if you agree with me that um, yeah. this man Absolutely. always exhibited uh, calmness in the midst of trouble. Even while the nation is making noise, everybody's, you know, making noise and everybody's going. The man, like a fine officer, a fine, you know, military chief, that he is, uh, he will remain calm. And um, he, he, I, I want to believe that he also had his plan. He, he always had his plan, you know, mapped out. And regardless of the noise you are making, regardless of uh, the kind of backlash that come to the military or the government that he was serving, he, he was always, you know, calm and um, calculating his next line of action. So I think it's a big lesson for people who are still in service that indeed one day you're going to drop the baton as well mm -hmm. and one day people are going to sit down at yes. the table like this to talk about you. Talk about you. Now, Julie, we should start seeing visuals mm -hmm. of um, precision guarded assaults. Yes. We will start seeing um, videos mm -hmm. about the assault. That was about the first time mm -hmm. I'll be seeing that from the Nigerian Air Force mm. starting yes. to be corrected. Yes. I've never in my life, yeah. it is this administration of Air Marshal Sadiq that anytime they go on assault like that, we see videos and the videos will be sent on the press releases and everything. Mm. And I saw this as an innovation. No, it's a way that for Nigerians to know that there's no propaganda. Mm. Let me also say something for the first time. Yes, I got close to the Air Force for one thing. I watched Sadiq address his troops. 
and he said something that I held on to. He said, we have done so well. He was addressing them. He gave them lunch in Yola and was addressing them. He said, we have done so well. Today, Boko Haram cannot claim that it totally occupies any local government in Nigeria. You know, as a man with an eye for the spoken word, mm. I was already processing what he said. He didn't say they don't occupy anywhere because that's a lie from the pit of hell. He's not a propagandist. He's not a propagandist. Mm. You will never hear anyone say, oh, deny what, deny their accomplishments. No. You know, when someone says Boko Haram does not occupy any part of Nigeria, and another one says Boko Haram does not fully occupy any, any local, local government. That's the truth. To say they don't occupy any part of Nigeria, God knows it's a lie. I go to the area, till today I can still mention places because I monitor developments. I can still mention places that as we speak, they are strongholds of Boko Haram. They are still there. I know places that we've tried to dislodge them recently that they turned our troops back. They repelled the attack. So when, to impress me, I first look at you as a person. Are you a stickler to the truth? Mm. Are you the sort of person whose loyalty to the truth is unflinching? Mm. Can I learn that by listening to you? Boko Haram does not fully occupy any local government in Nigeria. He said that in 2017, and I held on to it because that was the truth. If he had said, do not occupy any local government, I would have said, Chief of Air Staff, sir, you are a liar. But he said, fully occupy Occupy. any, which is the truth. It's the truth. They do not have the capacity anymore to do what they used to do. We agree. But you can't say they don't occupy any part of Nigeria because any time you dislodge them from where they are, you will go and take credit that Mm -hmm. uh, we chase them away from their stronghold. Mm -hmm. Even last week, we still listed about three of their strongholds that we chased them away from Mm -hmm. in the Sambisa area. Mm -hmm. So when I heard that, I said, yes, I have an idea now. Mm -hmm. This is the way this thing, and I've been monitoring since then. So you mm-hmm. see that in Damboa local government, maybe about three, uh, three communities, they are there. You see that in Goza, maybe uh, uh, some communities, they are there. But they don't fully control any local government anymore. And that's the truth. So I was impressed because I was seeing him for the first time that day. I've been monitoring him, talk, seeing his achievement. Then talking about the videos that you are talking about, mm-hmm. The Nigerian Air Force raided um, bunkers in Aripo, all of mm, these areas. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And they filmed the operation. That was what drew me close to them that, yes, we are beginning to do something right. Mm. Yes, the former, uh, that's the former um, um, spokesman. I said, You are beginning to do some, something right. I know facts. There were drone attacks inside Sambisa. Nigerian Air Force will show at the point when the missile mm. of the drone mm. uh, it's, hits it's the is. armor tank. Mm. And you will see the armor tank mm. explode. explode. On some occasions, mm. you even notice people fleeing. Mm. Yes, you see that. Yes, now I've even mm. brought videos mm. back from Sambisa, if you remember. Mm. The camera went them. very low at some point. Yeah. Mm. You have to see Yes, you know, and some of the, 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 even the reconnaissance aircraft that they use, mm. they have very good cameras that will give you very clear view as uh, despite the fact that they are flying at high altitude it will still give you a very clear view so i became really impressed and i sought to to to, to know a lot more by getting close to them mm. and when i saw him you know as someone myself who likes some of the best fighter jets in the world i went, i said Chief, why don't you ask for an F-16? Because when I read about the Egyptian Air Force, for example, because of their friendship with the U.S., 
some of the top range American weapons they mm. give them. Mm. That's why Egypt is a country that <laughs> in Africa you can't mess with them. Even Nigeria, you, they are not mess with them. They are some of the best uh, equipment. Soldiers. Yes. They have a large army and capable, uh, I mean, a very good equipment. So America has given Egypt some of these their fighter jets. And I said, why didn't you ask for an F-16? So he smiled. Confident as always, just like Oba said. He said, you must look for something that best suits your environment. I, then I moved to um, ground attack helicopter. I said, why didn't you also go for Apache? Mm. Well, as far as I'm concerned, there's no ground attack helicopter like the Apache. And he told me that an assessment, they conducted an assessment, which showed that many Apaches were lost in Af Afghanistan. So they are also thinking that if you buy a ground attack helicopter for around for, more, for around fifty something a million dollars. Mm. And you you don't want to lose it in battle. Mm. Mm. Of course, it it is it's fantastic. You it, it can help you to defeat the enemy. You can you can fire his cannons here in Lagos and it will it will do damage in Ibadan. Mm. But the Apache can still be brought down by an AK-47. Mm. If the if Okay, it, because it, it flies so... Yes, yeah. you know a lot of it is thick ammo, mm. but some of these bad rebels already know the what parts mm. of the aircraft that if they fire at, the target. They, they, it's like a, a soft underbelly. Mm. Mm. So it, 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 advantage. Yes, he, he told me that some of it were lost, and you put all of that... So you are looking for something more, <coughs> that even if in terms of the avionics, in terms of the technology, mm. that there is not as updated as your preferred, uh, what's it called, ground attack helicopter. You don't want to buy something that you are not sure that in the course of battle, it won't be lost. So he gave me those reasons and I was con convinced mm. that, look, mm. it was right to go for Tucano. Tucano mm. can fly many hours without a need for refueling. Of course, some of these American jets, you need to refuel if you want to go long-range uh, uh, bombing raids. Mm. Then, the Tucano, even on hard surface, it can land on hard surface. You, it doesn't have to get to uh, maybe a, an airstrip or uh, uh, an airport before it can land. Then, the Tucano can also do um, reconnaissance. You can use it to spy on the enemy. So we can do a number of things, the number of things. So he felt that, ah, given the situation that we find ourselves, that this will be a much more useful than any other aircraft. Oba, from what we've highlighted so far, that means it's very obvious now that, look, if we want to win this war against insurgency, as long as the insurgency don't have access to air power, that means the federal government must invest and Everything. keep investing in the Air Force. Air power mm. So that we'll have that edge and advantage over mm. them mm. and we'll be able to mop up these mm. insurgents. I agree with you. And uh, from what Jiri said, um, you know, um, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, you know, is also a man of strategy. And um, is not just blindly uh, pushing funds into the Air Force. Like the instance he gave uh, in the case of. Um, you know, bringing in Apache to fight the enemies. There are some weaknesses there, of course, which is uh, from the analysis known for uh, known to the enemy, and um, that would be a waste of a waste of resources. So that, that's that's a strategic part of the man. For uh, maybe probably any other man, he will have blindly you know gone for such. And um, at the end of the day, you you count more losses than we are counting mm -hmm. right now. So. For the government to really focus on the on the air force, it's not just focusing attention on the air force. It's not just you know building on the on the on the air power of the military, but doing it strategically, doing it with a, with a meaning, and not just putting fund there for the purpose of mentioning huge amount of money. It's not enough, you know. As 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 far as I'm concerned, you need resources to fight a battles like Nigeria is fighting right now. But um, uh, the resources must be strategically invested. So we'll give it to uh, the, the retired um, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar in that area. And I think it will be so, so useful to the government, even in retirement, in the area of consultancy, so to say. Uh, part of the strategy, uh, like we uh, you know, agreed earlier, was uh, the involvement of the women 
uh, in the in the in the battle against insurgency. Uh, a young a young lady came to mind. That's Tolu Lope Arutile. Uh, you know, we, we lost that fine, fine lady yeah, uh, sometimes yeah, last year. Yeah, yeah. And um, it, it's a strategy for people in, his, uh, in Abu Bakr's, um, you know, uh, category or age great intent, you know, of, or, or experience. Uh, no one would have expected that a young lady like uh, Tolu Lokwe uh, will be uh, involved in, in, such, in such a battle. Mm. So it's, it's part of his strategy mm. uh, to really, um, you know, over, overpower uh, the, the enemies that you give to him. But um, having said that, the Yoruba will say that I'm uh, only Koryo Maji, which means there's no way uh, you are perfect at working. Your head must shake at one point in time or the other. Uh, yeah, as, 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 as much as uh, the, the encomiums keep pouring in for uh, Sadiq Abubaka, we also need to uh, look at those, um, you know, little, little flaws here and there while in office. And uh, one of them actually uh, started earlier and it, it cut across all the, all, the, all the forces in the Nigerian military. And that's talking about the use of media. Whether we like it or not, propaganda is, is, part, of, is part of warfare. And, um, but you have to do it in ways that will yield results to you. The use of media, for the first time in, in, in many years, we saw uh, clips of, uh, you know, attacks on the camps of the enemy on TV. That, that's a positive for them. But we need to do more in that regard. We need to get experts to do more in that regard. Because we it's need that Boko Haram too, they also put the, uh, their own story. Yes, many Regular people really Islam. don't know what the Nigerian military is doing. And that's why some of us, we argue from the point of blindness. Because we've not been given anything to talk about. We've not been given anything they, they, to they, see. They will not even, if, for example, you want to go to certain areas, they mm. will say, no, you can't go. Because they don't want to, you to see What's some of the things happening. They then do an independent story. You know, um, uh, Al Jazeera came to Bono State. They mm. were arrested. The, the entire crew was arrested. Which, of mm. course, should be worked upon. Mm. It, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a thing that should be uh, worked upon. Maybe it's they not, have I to... believe that coverage of the armed forces, coverage mm. of a war, mm. should not simply be about pushing press releases that are full of lies to people to and then US, US, and they expect mm. them to go and publish. Mm. For example, we claim that we repaired the attack in Baga in December 2019. Mm. Mm. And of course, it was a lie. Remember when I returned, you asked me, you said, who is in Bagan? I said, Boko Haram was in Bagan at that time. Because that was the truth, and God mm. knows it. But they were expecting you to say otherwise, as a journalist. He expected me to, you know, uh, Daily Trust was, uh, was locked up yes. for that yes. story. Yes, mm. Because Daily Trust, what did Daily Trust do? People were fleeing the fighting. Mm. They saw them, suddenly uh, IDPs, Mm. At the margin, so could in, uh, in uh, my degree. So they went talk to those ones. What is the situation of things now? And they told them what they had seen. Mm. Before then, the army had claimed that it repelled the attack. But the truth. But the truth. Mm. Uh, the truth was it was a lie. They didn't repel the attack. Mm. Boko Haram had to now record themselves sitting on the bare floor inside mm. the headquarters of multinational joint task force in Baga. Mm. All of the boats that the Navy were using, they stole. They took those boats away. Mm. Now, after they did all of that, the Trust did the story, saying that we were planning a major offensive to retake Baga. Yes, I, I remember the story. They now, they now locked up the Trust. On. Yes. It was the president who ordered that they should go and um, reopen mm -hmm. the Trust. They locked up the Trust and said that they were revealing Sure too much. But if <laughs> if you were not, if backing. you repel them, mm. you will still be in charge of the area now. So if someone says you are trying to retake, you just laugh it over. These ones don't know what they are saying. When we now, when our troops, some weeks later, now found a way to retake part of Baga, the Joe Army staff now praised them. He issued a press release. Mm praising them. I then said, uh, you said you repelled. Why are you praising them for the breakthrough that they made in entering <laughs> that place? That means all along, I just have been fed lies. Don't also forget there was a time that we were told that um, that Sheka was hiding in, the, in one of the buildings of the NGOs. Mm, mm. In uh, in uh, Maiduguri, they went there 
ransacked the whole place. They Nothing never, was found. Uh, yes, the car was not found there. So, many things happen. There are better ways of handling the media. Experienced gatekeepers like you and I will not simply push out written test. You know, we have been misled here. You're sat mm. in this studio, mm. <laughs> and a, an army spokesman called in to tell mm. us that they repelled an attack. I can't forget that day. On, <laughs> on, on Unimid. <laughs> on Unimid. Yeah. And that, uh, no, uh, an attack uh, on um, oil workers. Yes. They were going to the lecture basin with mm. oil drilling. Mm. Some of them were lecturers at Unimed. When that uh, story broke and we talked about it on air, the spokesman called us to say, we repel the attack, mm. we captured their weapons. Mm. We finished that program, people were calling us from Aduguri, university lecturers were calling us to say that corpses of their police were being brought mm. to the school. That that claim was, was, lie. was a lie. Mm. We got angry. The following day, I said, go and cover the funeral. Mm. As our reporter, the late um, Kolomi Dalal, mm. got to the University of Maiduguri premises, people were mourning. The same lecturers that they told us mm. they rescued mm. and they seized the opponents, uh, the enemy's weapons, were being buried. Mm. So, that, that part of so now, you not only push falsehood into the public space, mm. but you also used our, our platform. Our platform to, to mislead to the public. That. So mm. people are now sending nasty tests. And a whole institution like the Nigerian Army is not good for them. So, so, so that, that's is a problem. That a, yes. Information management is mm. part at of that warfare. Point, at that point, some of us began to view everything pushed out mm. with, uh, with, with, with uh, mm. so much scrutiny. If we were not mm. sure, mm. we would not go to town. So, some so, people will say, ah, why is it that you don't report our uh, successes? If I can verify the success, I'll report. Of course, I'll report. But no success that you simply wrote a press statement. Audio. The press statement, sometimes you wrote it. You even contradicted yourself in it. In the same publication. You did not subject <laughs> it to thorough scrutiny of your own. You contradicted yourself there. Like somebody wrote recently that um, they ambushed troops, they ambushed the enemy. Yet, in the same breath, you are talking about a fierce battle. What is an ambush? That, that, that doesn't, that doesn't an ambush is usually swift. <laughs> you catch the enemy Sunday. by surprise and you flick. Yes. You flick. Uh, so, so, so I think it. I think it's a big lesson for the incumbent to pick uh, from the immediate past. Um, you know, information management is part of modern warfare. No, the, the kind even the, the current uh, mm. the, the director of uh, population for the Air Force, mm. like his predecessors has done a very good job of projecting the Air Force. Mm -hmm. If they, they have something to tell you, they'll push it out. And they usually will back it up with videos and all that, yes. pictures. Which, which is an evidence. Yes, yeah. so mm. they will not, I've never seen in the last six years where the Air Force claimed that he did something that we discovered that they did not do. Mm. They will not even do that, mm. you know? So, and in the, in the, in the um, eyes of the public, the Air Force has integrity. Because they've not messed themselves up compared in to any way. compared to the other forces. Yes. Mm. Once you put too much accent on propaganda, mm. you will not even know when to stop. You do yourself more disservice. Yes, and then you 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 push some things out because there are ways in this modern age there are ways by which information can be verified. Mm. Mm. If mm. all of the uh, foreign media outlets, all of the uh, humanitarian organizations in that place are saying something different to what you are saying. Then, then there's people, a problem. People will doubt that you are saying the truth. You can't be right and everybody is wrong. That okay. is the thing. We'll take this break. When we come back, we'll talk more. It's still Journalist Hangout. Please stay with us. It's Journalist Hangout on Sunday. We're reaching you live from her new studio here in Lagos, Nigeria. And we are looking at the giant strides of the former chief of air staff, that's Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar. And we've been talking about um, the six, six months that he held sway as the chief of air staff. But actually, in that war, something was missing, mm. all true. There was serious lack of synergy between the infantry troop 
that the military on the ground mm -hmm. and the um, our Air Force. And that's we saw slow down the rate of achievement that even if Sadiq Abubakar as an individual, if he, he was an excellent chief of staff and everything, but that was a major abatros to the success of the chief of staff. Yeah. Um, I will not say there was no synergy, but I will say the synergy was not enough. Because the truth is, no one, no one um, force among the armed forces can succeed without the other. The Air Force can stay uh, airborne, bomb all kinds of locations. But you need the surface troops to take control to of the place. Mm. If you bomb the go, they will come back. Mm. But if you don't hold the ground, then you are telling the enemy that after a while they can return to the place. I can tell you that there are many places that the Nigerian army captured and recaptured and recaptured. Because as soon as they go, the boys will come back. Hmm. One, and part of the reason for that is the fact that we do not even have enough troops. That's, that's a big problem. Okay. But the coordination, the synergy has to be better. Hmm. I think that even um, across board, when you look at the way the war is fought, the strategy, I don't think that collectively they are in agreement about the methods to adopt. Mm -hmm. I remember the National um, Security Advisor going to the Senate to complain that service chiefs were not taking instructions from him. Mm -hmm. It was very shameful, but it happened. Reality on ground. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have also seen I saw a statement too that the former chief of defense staff issued that suggested clearly that service chiefs were not taking instructions from him. Maybe we uh, offered a suggestion here and there, and such suggestions were not uh, implemented. I saw I saw one story like that. So, and the truth is, if we have, you had someone who belonged to the 20-something course, and you are 30-something course, and you still do not think you should respect him and, um, and uh, listen to him, obey his instructions, then something is wrong. The current chief of defense staff, L.E.O. Irabo, has to be respected. He's senior to the chief of army staff, senior to the chief of uh, naval staff and chief of air staff. So they hurt, in, by, by, I mean, in terms of when they go to NDA and all that, when they, 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 they are course. So they have to respect him. There must be a level of, a high level of discipline within the armed forces. The job of the chief of defense staff is to, when there is, uh, and I, I expect that this time around we will have more missions coordinated the same time. I mean, um, under the command of the chief of defense staff, because it is his duty to bring the armed forces together. If there is an operation mm. that they are all simultaneously they will be involved in, that operation has to be under the control, coordinated, uh, I mean, uh, coordination of the chief of defense staff. Mm. We need to have more of that because we have a chief of defense staff now who has seen it all in that area. Mm. He's been ADC to chief of army staff. He's been um, the first, he was the first commander of Operation Lafayette Adole. He was commander of the multinational joint task force based in Njamena. You know, so he, he, he is someone who has experience of that war zone itself. He knows what to do. So they have got, and all of the service chiefs too, have at one time or the other served in, in Borno State. So they have to respect him. 
the synergy, I expect the synergy will be better this time. A situation in which service chiefs will certainly not be on talking terms. <laughs> it will trickle down on their, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. On their troops. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. And we had that <coughs> with this last set of service chiefs. They have got, the current service chiefs must learn from that. It will be too shameful to hear that, oh, these ones, they are not on talking terms, they don't even pray in the same mosque. It shouldn't be happening. If, you, if we want to put Nigeria first, it will be responsible of service very chiefs petty. to be fighting one another. You that, can't that, win the war if you are doing that. Yes. That's not professional. Yeah. Yes. You know? So there has to be that synergy. We are going on an operation, a major operation, get the Air Force involved mm. so that they can help you soften the ground. Mm. The so, complementary rule we are talking about. Mm. Yes, I agree with you. I agree with you. you know, um, certain things are not just professional uh, in certain uh, human endeavor, like um, we, we are fighting a war. Nigeria is fighting a war, and uh, people at the forefront of the war are these um, service chiefs. So it, it will be, um, 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 you know, um, unproductive for any of them, or two of them at least, uh, not to be on the same page. Uh, because whether you like it or not, people who are following them are taking a cue from uh, the kind of relationship that exists among uh, their leaders. I want to go back to um, the Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar and, um, you know, all these accolades and, uh, you know, the encomiums that have been pouring for him. A lot of people really may not even, uh, you know, understand why this is so. Uh, the man is not just an accidental success, so to say. If, if you go through his profile, if you go through his... Um, uh, you know, his life records, starting from day one up to the point uh, when he retired or he was um, he's out of office after spending six months in that capacity. This is a man who had a BSc in political science and MSc in strategic studies uh, from the University of Ibadan. You don't expect anything less from the performance that he has given so far while in office. Uh, this is a man who has been, you know, a part of the a military since November 1979. You, you don't, you know, he, he, he came to this office uh, when he was first appointed by President Mahmoud Buhari with a lot of experience, just like Jide was talking about uh, Leo Rabo just a moment ago, that uh, here is a man who has been this, who has been Senator. that. He has a lot of, you know, experiences that, that, that work for him. The same thing applied to um, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubaka. Uh, and uh, don't also forget that he graduated as the overall best student in his set and um, the best in flying cadet uh, course while he was still undergoing uh, training. So uh, for me, this, this, these are good. And he likes to fly. He uh, likes like to fly. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's also a, a flying officer. So uh, this is someone that you know, came to the job with a lot of tools, a lot of experience, a lot of um, um, sagacity, so to say. And he has been an external examiner uh, at the person. Nigeria Defense College since 2010. Only someone who is bright will occupy such a position for that a long mm. a period of time. So it's not a surprise that all of this is coming in uh, for him. So the people, you know, I keep saying about, I keep talking about the people who are coming after him. They need to go and, in a way, um, for them, personally create a course out of uh, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar and study him critically, study him inside out, mm. and look at those areas that appear like his weaknesses so that mm. you can build on. Mm. Is is human, it's fallible. So mm. he must have some weaknesses that you can build on. The, but is it our strength? You can also build on that to achieve better I results. I think that when you look at what he's done, is um, he critically studied the Air Force. He mm. knew what the Air Force was lacking. Mm. He knew what he had to do to take the Air Force to the next level. Mm -hmm. For example, in the past. Engineers, the grounds people, mm. have always been neglected. Mm. And those are very the pilots, is pilots giving, getting so much attention when it comes to promotions and the rest. Mm. But what did they do this time? All of those people, those engineers and other people mm. that he knows he needs to keep the airplanes in good condition and at all times, he focused on them, he improved them in mm. terms of their capacity, mm. and he, he, he motivated them by getting a lot of them promoted. Okay, I have a caller. Emmanuel is calling us from Abuja. Thank you for Hello, joining us, Emmanuel. Afternoon. Yes, go ahead, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. 
Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, the Enconia you people are calling up for uh, Masha Abu Bakar. I think it was it because when the man took over the leadership position of the airport, he tried it there, he repositioned the airport. And I think Air Masha Sadiq Abu Bakar is a great leader. He, he organized there. I think all the encomium they are going for him, it's worth it. So I think kudos to Nigeria for But our prayer is this new chief of air staff mm. and the chief of defense staff, the way Baba Chide is there, they should coordinate because the last time the relationship between Sadiq Abubakar and Buratai is not cordial. Mm. So mm -hmm. I think this new set of people should try their That's best true. and and so that we'll get results, so that these bandits, these criminals, will be dealt with. Yes. Well, we'll, you know, we, thank you, Emmanuel. We keep avoiding some sensitive parts, but Nigerians will always <laughs> come out and tell you the truth. They know. They know. didn't want to go into, you know, to we didn't want to mention and, and information, but Nigerians will always come out and tell you that, look, we know this is what yeah, it they is. Know, they know. <laughs> uh, that's why it shouldn't happen. Once it happens, you can be sure that some people will know. There are people, there are families in the Air Force. Yeah, it's just like people friends. dying. Mm. Just like 44 uh, soldiers dying in, um, in battle. Mm. And you say only two died. Mm. Well, the, 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 the people, those ones had friends. The others who died have mm. friends, they have family friends. members. You, mm. then, you suddenly you start seeing pictures of uh, dead uh, soldiers on uh, okay, the social on, media on, age. Yes. Mm. Mm. <laughs> people paying tribute to them and all that. Mm. You know? So mm. remember even here one of our newscasters mm. lost a cousin mm. in Yobe State. You know, and uh, the day they were going to bury uh, the guy, the family was represented. They too will also tell people. Of course, so absolutely. even if you refuse to own up that that tragedy happened, that setback happened, somehow the story still manages to filter out. I think um, emotions, personal emotions, you know, did a lot of uh, damage uh, to uh, the last set of um, 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 service, service chief. chiefs. Just, just like we just pointed out now, it's personal emotions. You know, you want your emotions to uh, be above at the interest of the job you do or the assignments you have been given, you can uh, bury that and work for the best result. Because at the end of the day, uh, you'll be, you know, you'll be at the receiving end. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you want to uh, keep malice with someone that is so critical to the success of your own office. Mm -hmm. And um, it's something just like I said, everybody is, is aware about that. And uh, I think it, it did a great deal of disservice, a great deal of damage yes. to the success that should not be recorded while the last service chief was in office. I think that. You know, by tradition, they usually appoint chief of defense staff from mm. the, that set of service chiefs. Mm. That's mm. what Obasanjo did mm. throughout his time. They always appoint the most senior, mm. the most of, and then you appoint some fresh service chiefs. Mm. Maybe at that time, they were thinking, although the three service chiefs were thinking that one of them, because mm. Oloni Shakin was mm. their senior. They were thinking that once Oloni Shakin moves on, the president will pick one of the three. Mm. So mm. you can see what looks like the basis of the uh, rivalry now. Mm. Mm. Because mm. They, were, uh, they, were, they, they, they probably were thinking that the president will pick one of the three as new chief of defense staff and retire oh. Oloni Shakun. But it didn't happen. So, it's well, you know, so that was it's the source politics. of the yes. 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 Uh, it's rivalry. It's, um, it's a brief one today. Thank you so much, um, Oba. Hey, Oba is a founding hey, member of Journalist Tanga hey, House. Welcome coming. back home. It's all coming for me, and uh, the kind of nostalgic feeling that I, I well, say Welcome feeling back right home. Yes. Thank you. And, you. and our, first <laughs> meeting, our first meeting where the decision was taken mm. to start this program, it was part. Yes, <laughs> part and parcel. Yes, yes. And, so, and that is our package. We continue with our regular Journalist Tanga House tomorrow by 5 p.m. I'm Ayo Deli See you tomorrow.